Welcome back! With our 1000 science per minute base fully built up and chugging along nicely through a whole slew of expensive technology, you'd expect us to be able to sit back and relax a bit. The opposite is true however, as we've neglected basically everything else just to get blue signs up and running as early as we realistically could. We finished adding the final resources to make blue signs run fully independent at around hour 158. This more than doubled our resource processing power and with that pollution output. So since then we've been frantically running around the base like a maniac to reduce the overall pollution output of the base. After obtaining the arguably most playstyle changing technology in the game of construction bots combined with the personal roboport, we finally got around to fully deleting the ancient pipe wall, which was not only made fully obsolete by the stone wall put in place after the second great biter war involving red ammo, but was also working actively against us by causing tons of red expansion circles in our base, where there could be more green decoy expansion chunks. And the more green decoy chunks we generate, the fewer biter expansions will actually settle somewhere outside of our walls, keeping the rest of the map as accessible as possible. We also repeatedly reclaimed all depleted rare mining drills and in the process finished upgrading every single last running mining drill in the base for a rare one. Which means every ore patch now has 50% more resources in the ground than the mouse over numbers display. Nice. What is less nice though is that playing Mike has lost sight of the mission to beeline our way off of this planet and is deviating into expensive non-essential quality of life techs. Like the exoskeleton, the power armor, bot speed 2, and then there is mining productivity 2, which famously costs more resources than it saves. But worst of all, laser, a blue tech which by itself doesn't do anything, so most likely more derailment awaits. Anyway, as part of making the base more expansion circle green, we have also gotten rid of the severely underpowered separate radar power network and replaced it with single solar panel powered radars. That is not as much for the 60 pollution a minute the two boilers powering the 100 radars were puffing out, but removing the necessary wooden power pole network itself gave us many more green decay expansion chunks in the base. We do want to keep the important parts of the base visible at all times though, so we overconfidently overinvest into a whopping 200 rare raiders, placing like 4 of them connected to our fully powered base like a normal person, so that we can see what's going on in our base at any point during the day and uh, night. We also sprinkle some more rare raiders around to get a two chunk deeper visibility into the nature reserves where we are forbidden to place anything. And uh, I'm sure the 163 leftover rare raiders will eventually come in handy on other planets or something. Anyway, at least all of this running around was done fast with the new exoskeletons equipped and we temporarily sacrificed some roboport power for two rare exoskeletons, nearly doubling our move speed. Nice. Unfortunately that means we need some actual personal batteries in our armor now as the internal roboport batteries can only power the bots. The nine solar panels can barely power the two exoskeletons alone and only during the daytime. At night we are literally running on batteries, so we're gonna make sure we'll be exploiting the energy free range of the rare construction bots to the fullest extent. For instance we are building entire iron and copper mines without spending a single joule of energy from our armor. Nice. We have been so focused on getting up all science packs as soon as possible, we haven't even researched tool belt yet. But why research tool belt when you can research triple tool belt? More commonly known as the logistics bot stack, it enables the logistics trash slots, which are intended to be used to remove stuff from your inventory by ordering the logistics bots to come pick it up and put it in a chest somewhere. But we are going to be using it as 30 extra free inventory slots for a way longer time than you would expect, as with a little bit of care you can deny the logistics bots access to the logistic trash slots.
More on that later, I suppose. We will mainly be using the trash slots to carry around lesser used items needed once in a blue moon, but not easily craftable on site, like landfill, fluid pumps, rare raiders and roboports. We can also carry, for example, up to 3000 extra belts when we go out to build mining outposts, and we can automatically store any trash items we pick up, like wood, coal, stone and ore, in the logistics trash slots automatically, keeping our main inventory nice and tidy. The best part of all is that unlike the unnecessary tech deviation that is the actual tool belt technology, the triple tool belt technology, which as a side effect also unlocks logistics bots, is actually required on the way to rocket silo these days. I guess simply loading rocket silos with inserters is considered uh, right up there with hand feeding in the list of lesser intended game mechanics or something. Anyway, after all that running around, we have accumulated enough quality components that we can afford to make the 2000 uncommon productivity modules to upgrade the second half of the labs. Which will soon be nee needed, let's say used to research the 60 second per sign spec technology of mining productivity too and will later be needed to research low density structures, rocket fuel, the rocket silo itself, thrusters and the planet discoveries. Those techs will require all of the 1008 labs to be active at all times. And we find we still have enough leftover uncommon red and green chips to finally complete the full amount of uncommon efficiency modules needed to minimize power consumption and pollution output for every single last two module slot machine in the base. We cannot clean up these severely polluting productivity modules blue science assemblers with efficiency modules though, so we decide to make the significant rare resource investment to upgrade blue science production to rare assemblers. At a combined price of 54 rare iron and copper per assembler, it is not exactly cheap, so is it worth the investment? Rare assemblers have exactly the same stats as normal assemblers, Except for that they craft 60% faster, for no extra power or pollution cost. So that means we can cut down to just 150 rare assemblers to do the same work previously done by 240 common assemblers, cutting well over a third of the energy and pollution costs. Fewer machines doing the same work also saves on the amount of expensive modules we need, so we decide to upgrade the uncommon productivity modules we are currently using for blue science and invest almost half of our rare red chips into making 300 rare productivity modules for the blue science assemblers. And just look at the difference in the blue science footprint. With the overall complete, the blue science assemblers are now consuming 26 megawatts less than before, all the while emitting under 900 pollution a minute instead of almost 1500, while producing 900 science per minute from even fewer ingredients than before, saving us slightly more pollution and resources in addition elsewhere. These savings feel so significant, we go ahead and spend literally all of our rare resources upgrading the rest of the science production in the same way. With the pollution and power savings from blue science, we can reinvest that into upgrading the 216 efficiency modules engine assemblers to just 114 rare assemblers outfitted with the rare productivity modules, increasing engine pollution, but saving heaps of iron down the line. For example, iron gears for the engines can now be produced by 6 rare assemblers instead of 16 common ones. 
Not pipes though. Pipes don't take productivity modules. And there's little merit to upgrading efficiency modules common assemblers to rare ones. Not only are they consuming very little power and outputting very little pollution compared to productivity modules assemblers, also the uncommon efficiency modules are very affordable compared to rare productivity modules, so there is little need to cut down on the number of assemblers used. Speaking of iron gears, gears for red signs also got upgraded. We need 8 assemblers here instead of 6 for a variety of reasons. First of all, compared to iron gears for engines for blue signs, iron gears go directly into red signs, which means we skip one step of multiplicative productivity discount. And then there's the reason that someone apparently decided that this playthrough isn't enough of a challenge anymore. So we are now banned from researching fast inserters for the rest of the game. Which also means no bulk or stack inserters, but even worse, we are going to be stuck with an inserter hand size of 1 for the entire game. Well, good luck unloading trains on Fulgora, mate. <coughs> hey, playing Mike here. Is that armchair script writing guy mocking me again? Well, then I'll also refuse to research circuit network for the rest of the game. Good luck explaining all the contraptions I will make in the future, script writing Mike. <laughs> That guy thinks explaining a simple wire condition is more difficult than explaining the inner workings of actual computers in Factorio. That guy has obviously never written a script in his life. Well anyway, all of a sudden it appears the fastest inserter we'll ever have access to is the rare red inserter, operating at just under 2 items a second. Rare iron gear assemblers need well over 4 iron a second to operate at max speed, and while we could rebuild to add a third inserter per assembler, it would still output only 2.41 gears a second. That means 6 rare assemblers still fall short of outputting the 15 gears a second we need for red signs. And no, I am not spending over 500 productivity modules and the accompanying 1200 extra pollution a minute on the red science assemblers. That is literally the worst recipe in the game to put productivity modules in. Putting an overly long story short, put your best productivity modules in the machines processing the most resources per second, not in the ones processing the most resources per item. That means my limited amount of rare modules are 6.66 times better off in the iron gear assemblers for red signs than in the red signs assemblers themselves, despite the red signs recipe being 1.5 times the cost. Heck, even putting them in blue signs assemblers saves less resources per module, and to my surprise, they even outperform the labs running red, green and blue signs. Although the labs are a special case, as they don't suffer the pollution penalty when running on clean energy. Well, after producing exactly 24,000 useless uncommon mining drills in our quest to find rare ones, it is time to say goodbye to the rare miner maker. It has produced 1736 rare mining drills in the process, enough to cover all current ore patches. And while we will need more miners in the future, we will simply make them on demand from straight up rare resources going forward. With rare plates being an order of magnitude less likely than uncommon plates, we need a new purpose to make use of the giant uncommon plate flow. And I think I found it. Batteries. Tens of thousands of batteries. Paired with other superfluous uncommon ingredients, uncommon batteries will be able to produce some very useful equipment for us with meaningful quality benefits. Without breaking the bank and costing us tons of rare ingredients. Anyway, the power armor has now been researched, and after making a rare one... We can combine the two rare exoskeletons with our previous 9 Roboport armor. And after adding 3 extra for good measure, we can now control nearly 200 energy free bots.
god, we gotta be careful, because with a battery system this fragile, if I let the 200 bots fly out too far by just a single meter... They will suddenly all charge the complete flight distance instead of skipping the charging cycle completely. And if that happens, I will be limping along at the pre-exoskeleton speed again for quite a while. And after also upgrading the copper cable and green chips that feed into the red chips with uncommon quality quality modules. The last, well, unnecessary but still reasonable quality of life tech of bot speed to complete. And we are actually on to the completely illogical tech of laser. But why? Find out? Next. No, 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 no. So the most obvious choice is laser turrets, but for what? We are done fighting, as we theoretically possess well enough resources to get off of this planet. Well, if playing my keeps on course at least. And for interplanetary space flights, gun turrets are the only feasible choice for early spacefaring endeavors. Not only are the asteroids will encounter 90% laser resistant, lasers also have an insane power draw. Orders of magnitude higher than the couple solar panels early spaceships usually can provide. Then there are distractor bots, but Plague Mike is already distracted enough as is. The personal laser defense, a previously popular personal proactive protector, has meanwhile been nerfed into the ground left, right and center. And the discharge defense... <laughs> Next time.